What's going on guys? So today I have a pretty cool video for you. I'm gonna be talking about how I was able to create a software business with zero dollars starting up. And we'll get to that one sec, but I wanna share with you something pretty cool. So I was going through old pictures of looking at student results and I actually found mine in my iPhoto from about two years ago. So this was February, two years ago, a little bit less than two years. And I just wanna show you how much things have changed in less than two years and what's actually possible and just the mindset has changed so much from what's actually possible. So if you look here, you can see my February goals was to find three profitable products, contact three suppliers, each for each of those. I want to get 2,500 revenue that month, not profit, revenue, and I want to choose one of those three products and start it. Now your goals will probably look like this and of course as you go on they will change, mine are much more complex. And you can see my yearly goals, I thought there's no chance I was hitting these, but if I hit these, I was gonna be stoked. I want to hit 60,000 revenue. And if you don't already know, we hit 120,000 profit our first year on Amazon. So this was just February when I first started two months in. We want 4,000 profit a month, we want to start five new products, and we want to have 20,000 in the bank. Which, we accomplished all of these uh, and destroyed a lot of them. We were doing a little over 20,000 profit a month. We did, oh, I don't even know, I think 273,000 revenue first year. And I had about, I think 20 or, no, I had about 40,000 in the bank uh, at the end of the year, starting with about 2,000 and putting three quarters of that into Amazon. So, and then right next to it is a little screenshot of one of my good days of sales for me, which you can see $70. I was selling at about a $13 price point and sold five units and you can see my big monthly payment right here 166 dollars but we were profitable this was actually the faucet extender i was selling that ended up being patented you guys know the story so i just thought that was pretty cool how much can change in such a short amount of time and how i can go from thinking oh my gosh if i can make four thousand profit a month i can buy the car i want that'd be so cool but that seems like a lot to thinking okay yeah i can make five hundred thousand or a million in a month and it shouldn't be too difficult, I know it's possible, to saying, oh, I don't know if 4,000 is realistic, blah, 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 but a lot can change quick, so don't think I was always here and like this. I guarantee a lot of your goals look like this. You don't really know what to do. You're like, yeah, I know it's possible, but I don't really think, I don't know. It's back and forth, and that's completely normal. Um, I was at the same spot you were, where let's pretend two years ago I was you, and I was watching people on YouTube like me and I'd see them show like their PayPal or their Stripe and they'd be getting three, $5,000 a day. I'd be like, that's insane. If I could make a thousand a day, I'd be so stoked. I could do everything I wanted. That's my goal. I want to make that much. And I'm like, well, it's not realistic for me because they're kind of like an expert. They know so much. And that was me. That was my thinking. And I guarantee, guarantee that's how you guys feel right now. 99% of you. It's completely normal. As you start doing things, you see what's possible, you get some success, even some failures, your whole mindset, your confidence changes. I saw people building softwares, which is what this video is about, and I'd be like, oh, that seems way too complicated, that's way too hard, I don't know anything about that, to now where I just made one and I'm making a second, obviously I personally didn't make it, and it's not difficult, it's like a normal thing. Um, so it's all just how you think about it, and once you go along the journey, it will change completely. So guarantee this is where a lot of you guys are right now and don't think it's impossible to get where I am in the next year or two, because it is. So let's jump into the actual video. And I'm gonna be talking about how I started a software business from pretty much zero dollars and how you guys can too. So I wrote some notes, so I will be looking at the screen, not at you guys directly, um, because there's some stuff that goes into this. I just wanna explain kind of the whole process of this. So. How do you know if you should start a software business? Most of you probably think, well, I don't have 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 to go put in software. I can't do it, wrong. So how do you know if you should start a software business? A lot of people, and this goes with the whole new business thing, have some great new idea and wanna go start it and think it's gonna be a home run. And I strongly urge people not to, well, I don't wanna say I urge people, I don't. Uh, whatever you do, I'll support you. if. It's entrepreneurial, but I will tell you, oh, I don't think that's a good idea, I think it's a good idea, but with software, it's kind of the same thing. You don't wanna reinvent the wheel unless you know there's a problem you can fix and people will want the solution to that problem. But I like taking something that already exists, making it better, making it more efficient, making it more affordable, simpler to use, things like that. 
people will pay for practicality, for it to be efficient, for it to do something along those lines. Now, there's softwares in tons of different niches, entrepreneur, fitness, art, literally anything. Now, if you want something that doesn't exist already, it will be more expensive to get it started. Again, I'll talk about the cost and how you can start with zero in a minute, but it's easier to model off of something else with developers because they can just reverse engineer it pretty easily most of the time. So it's not too difficult. So what are your options with software? It's not just straight, okay, I'm gonna build my own software and that's it. You can create an app, smaller startup, very easier, a lot quicker. Now, I am not a fan of apps. If you have an, a software already and you wanna create an app around it, that's great. But if your sole business model is an app, I do not like those personally. Um, you can create a Chrome extension, pretty easy. It's a lot cheaper than building out a full software, again, and it's relatively easy to use. Most people can use it and you can test it the entire time while it's doing it. Now next, you can create a small software or a big software, full all out software. Now, one thing a lot of people think is they need to have the entire software created and done before they can launch it. When in reality, what most people do and most companies do, and what I think you guys should do, is start with a couple main features, your bread and butter, you know what you're doing, you know what it is, and what people really want, and then you get people in there working around and you can add smaller features. You can go into maybe, let's say you just have a general software or you start in a certain niche. You can always move more general after that. So let's pretend you have an Instagram software and you're helping people. It's like a follow and follow software app. Let's say you start with that. Please don't start that. Let's say you start with that. You add some features and you're like, well, I don't know what else to add. We got everything we want with Instagram. Well, what else would those customers already in there want? What else would make sense? You can move to, okay, I wanna create a Facebook section of our software, and then you can pull in a whole new market, and you're building all that software up. Now, the whole goal with a software business is to sell. Yes, you can make great money, you can make six figures a month pretty easily with software. If you know what you're doing, you have the marketing budget, and you can get it out quick. Um, but with software, it's right now, probably for the next couple of years still, I don't see it going anywhere, but it sells a lot. It gets very good evaluations. Sorry, I didn't know how to put that. It gets very high evaluations based off of a couple factors mainly. Obviously, how many people are in there, what your profit is, what your cash flow is. But main, main thing is the churn rate. So what churn rate is, is how long do people stay in your software? Are they coming and going every month? Is your average length of a customer two years, which would be pretty good? So that can change an evaluation from, okay, this is worth 5 million to, okay, this is worth 50 million. So with your software, you want it to be something people can integrate uh, that they're using and it's hard for them to leave. Now, obviously not in a kind of scummy way, but you want to integrate it. So let's say it's an entrepreneur niche. You want to be part of their business. So if they picked up and left and stopped using your software, they'd have a prop, not a problem, but it'd be difficult for them to go do other things that they maybe did on your site. Because let's, let's use for an example, ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels integrates with your business. If you leave it and you create a website and funnels on there, you lose all of that. You can't take it off, you can't just save it. So they have a lower churn rate because of that. They kinda sunk their teeth into you and it's hard to leave. So that's one thing when thinking about software. Now if this is over your head, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to keep it simple. Uh, software. Don't be intimidated by it, it's not really complicated. You don't have to do any of the coding or anything or even understand it, I still don't. Now, let's talk about the main thing. How do you find developers? Where do I look? How much does it cost? So there's a couple different places to find developers. You can look at Upwork, LinkedIn, Elance. You can just Google it and find it. Um, for me, I met mine in person and then the second one was through Upwork because I have two softwares in the works. Now, normal pricing, is usually 20 to $25 an hour, um, and that is people in India or other places like that. You can find it cheaper, but you don't wanna crap out on software. That's not something you wanna save an extra thousand, two thousand dollars on and not get it exactly how you want. Uh, it's worth spending the money on it. Now, like I said, 20 to $25 an hour. Now, let's say you're making an app. Again, it will depend a lot on how big the app is, uh, how complex it is, what you need done, what the time frame is. 
but normal for an app can be anywhere from one to 10K. Now these will be big ranges guys because it really varies and it can be outside. But normal, usually I'd say two to 7,000. So I put one to 10K uh, and it can take anywhere from two weeks to two months. For me, my software took about three weeks to make and then a couple weeks to make pretty, make small adjustments. Uh, and that was a smaller to medium sized software. So you have an app, pretty quick, pretty cheap. I don't recommend it. Chrome extension, you can do these pretty cheap as well. It's kind of similar to an app, obviously like a plugin on a Chrome extension. Now, I do enjoy these as softwares. You guys have probably seen Jungle Scout has one, uh, but they also have one on their webpage. That's not too complex. Um, now, the back end side of it is pretty complex, that side, but uh, how it all works and integrated is not. So for a Chrome extension, you're probably looking anywhere from 10 to 30, 40,000. Uh, more likely in the low 20s um, would be my guess. And I guess made that to take about one to three months. Again, this is just me from talking to other people, what I've experienced. I'm nowhere near an expert at software, uh, but I've been working with it a little bit. Now, if you're looking at a smaller software, again, based off the complexity, anywhere from 20 to 75,000 and can take three to six months um, in that range. And if you want a medium larger software, you're looking at 75,000 plus, could be a couple hundred thousand and probably more than six months realistically. Now, how can you start this with no money? You're like, great, let me just throw 75K out the window real quick. You don't need money to start. If you have it, it might be better, but an option is to partner with a developer. So right now you're asking, why would a developer partner with me? They're not business people. They know how to make the software. They don't know how to get customers. They don't know how to do any of that, which is why there's a lot of great softwares out there that do awful because they're not business people at all. So why would a developer partner with you? You have the idea, you know the business, you can get leads. Uh, again, even if you have basic knowledge of this, it's more than theirs. So there's no risk for them up front other than just wasting their time. So let's say you're gonna give them a percentage of your business and your goal is obviously to sell. Let's say you sell in three years for a million dollars, you give them 20%, they just made 200, 250,000 if you give them 20, 25% for a little bit of work now. High reward for them for just risking a little bit of their time and they don't have to do much work after setting it all up front other, may, other than maybe minor tweaks. Now, what's normal with partnering with a developer and how is that kind of structured and why you should actually do it? So for one of my softwares, I am. Uh, I met the guy in person, so that's actually how. But you can give them a percentage of your business. Now, again, it's gonna depend on who you are, what businesses you have in the past, who you're partnering with. Uh, for me, I gave 25%, 20 to 30% is pretty normal. Um, now, this person is full on board with me, full-time job for them as well. Uh, they have other side things, but I have them on my team. If anything ever goes wrong, uh, oh, I need this fixed quick, instead of me going, hey, can I pay you guys to do this? He's there, he's ready to go, he already knows. He has his foot in the game on this. Uh, and he has something to lose. Obviously not money, but like potential he'll lose uh, if he does not help grow this. So he has uh, his hand in the game. So he has a reason to want it to work more than just, okay, you pay me for my time, I'm done. Now, if you partner with someone, you have no risk up front of capital other than maybe the little bit to start an LLC, uh, get a website and things like that. Um, no risk up front for you. Developer, again, more serious because he has a stake in the game. And you have a full-time developer on your team now who will fix certain things uh, along the way when you have issues, if you hit a certain bug, if you want to add more features. You don't have to go pay again if you want to add more features. It's nice to have a full team or just that one individual. And software isn't as complex most of the time as people make it out to be. Uh, software I created was like a couple others, which I'll announce here soon. It's not live yet. Um, but it took about two weeks to make what they make. And it's not, it wasn't that difficult. He's like, yeah, it's really not that difficult. You just pull this here, here, here. I was like, oh, that's a lot easier than I thought. People make it sound complicated. So that's kind of the whole software side of what I'm doing and how you guys could kind of get into it if you wanted to. It is a little bit more advanced, but you don't need to be an expert by any means. And you don't need to have tons of money to start up either. You will need to find someone to partner with if you don't have the money, but that's, sometimes more beneficial and I actually prefer that method now. Uh, even if it does cost you a little bit in the long run, let's say I sell the business for 10 million, I just lost two of that over five years, let's say. 
Um, but I had that guy on my team in the long run. So you can look at it either way, uh, what the cost of each would be if you sell at X amount. But hope that was informative for you guys. You guys learned a little something and I will see you guys tomorrow in the next video.